I'm a subspecialist in glaucoma and cataracts. I see patients, I would say 80% of my patients have underlying glaucoma. Um, and so I take care of, manage their disease, uh, but I see a lot of consultations for cataracts and glaucoma, so other doctors who've asked me for their advice or uh, for the management of difficult patients. The profession of ophthalmology, interesting how I got into that. When I started medical school, I was convinced one thing I would not be was an eye doctor because I could not watch a Visine commercial without tearing up. So midway through my medical school, I thought I was going to be a doctor, you know, go to Africa and work over there for a while as a general medical doctor. And I had a general surgery rotation with somebody who had done that for 15 years. And he asked me what I was going to do. And I said, oh, that's what I was going to do. And he said, well, what do you hope to do over there as a medicine doctor? And I said, well, gee, it's full of disease. And he said, Son, you won't be able to do them any more good than a ditch digger as a medicine doctor. You need to have something that you can actually leave behind fixed. So you need to become a surgeon. So I went home where I lived with a bunch of other medical students and one of whom had started school saying he was gonna be an eye doctor. And I, so I went back to him and said, tell me about this again. And he said, why'd you pick that? And he said, well, first of all, my father was a general surgeon and he died young and I hardly knew him. So I picked a profession that would let me have what I thought was the best of the worlds of medicine. And that, and, and I said, well, just eyes? You're gonna do just eyes? And he said, look, when you take care of the eye, you get both sexes, you get young and old, you get to follow people, develop a relationship with them, follow them for years, and you get to do them some real good. You can make a, a big impact on something they value. Plus, what's really neat is that it attracts, you know, top 10% of the class of medical school. So you're gonna be hanging out with these creative and intelligent people for the rest of your life. And I said, I better rethink this thing. So that's how I ended up in it. What you want, quick answer, is you want a doctor who's smart, caring, careful, and quick. So the, the wonderful thing about my job is the part of the things that brought me into it in the first place. It's the opportunity to give to patients something they really appreciate and something that I feel I'm good at. So I have always felt it was important to be really up on top of what's going on. For 10 years I taught. For 20 years I was able to do the things I thought I was going to do as a general matter. I uh, taught in about 20 different countries, taught surgery. Um, and so I'm able to still do those kinds of things, to be able to use my manual dexterity when we need to do surgery and to use uh, my interest in keeping up with uh, what the latest is going on and to be able to offer the kind of care that I would want if I were seeking care. And people come to me sometimes, it's interesting. The friends that I have who feel like they have the uh, personal contact that they would ask me, they feel comfortable asking, well, you, you know, if you're gonna do my care, I want you to do this really special for me and I think to myself, this person doesn't really understand what they're asking. You don't want your doctor to treat you like you're going to be his masterpiece, like an artist who's going to create his masterpiece, because artists are often throw away things they're unhappy with. What you want, what I want as a doctor, when I look to a doctor, is for my doctor to be like a master craftsman. Somebody of course you want them to be bright, and of course you want them to treat you with respect. But I want them, when they uh, use their knowledge and make that diagnosis, to do only the tests that they need and none that they don't need. And when they get to the business of treating me, I want them to be able to work through that quickly, um, efficiently, like that's what they do all day, is create excellent work. I don't want this to be a one-off. 
I, you want to pick the person because he does what he does well. You don't want him to do it differently this time. And I feel like that's what I give my patients, that I treat them the same way as I would want to be treated if or one of my family members would be treated if uh, I was picking a doctor for them. Well, I came here from uh, being a professor in ophthalmology in New Orleans, and I picked uh, Mobile because at that time I had three kids in New Orleans, um, and I felt like it was time for me to either be in my hometown or my wife's hometown. And the good job came up first here. And so, enjoyed it ever since. This is wonderful to have the collegial atmosphere that a bigger practice gives you to have the support of other bright people. It's, to me, I, it's one of the wonderful things about being in medicine is having colleagues that you can uh, confide in and trust in and get help from and help to. Um, I, it's a wonderful environment to work.